Okay, we have a good one here today. This one was sent to me by Sid. We have the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x to the 2k e to minus the binomial coefficient of x to the 2k plus 1 over 2 dx. And we just have this condition over here to the right that k is going to be a member of the positive integers. Now, I thought this one was really unique, and I don't think I've ever done a problem on this channel where I've had the binomial coefficient in the exponent. I think I did a couple where it was just like the whole problem, but nothing quite like this. So to get started with this, I think the first thing I need to do is we need to figure out what is this thing right here, because it's gonna, hard, it's gonna be kind of hard to do anything else until we can figure out what this exponent is. And what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna want the formula for the binomial coefficient, or n choose k. This is just gonna be the same thing as n factorial over n minus k factorial times k factorial. So just putting this to use on what we have here, our n value is gonna be this x to the 2k plus one, and the k value in this is gonna be just two. Not to confuse this k with this k. And then we'll just kinda of use this formula. First, we're gonna want this top thing factorial, so we're gonna want x 2k plus one factorial over the same thing minus k, so this is gonna be x 2k plus one minus two factorial times two factorial. Two factorial is just two, so let's just write that in as a two. And what I wanna do is I wanna get some cancellation, which you usually can get with factorials just by expanding out some terms. So like x 2k plus one factorial, the next term is gonna be just x 2k plus one minus one. And then the next term, is gonna be x 2k plus one minus two. But if just writing this as a factorial, what that's gonna do is that's gonna give me all the rest of the terms, but then I can take this and cancel with this right here. So then let's take what we found right here, clean this up, plug it back in for the exponent and see what we can do with this. Okay, now that we've handled our binomial coefficient, we're doing pretty good, but we still have a pretty big mess here in the exponent. Let's see if we can simplify this some more. What I wanna do here is let's just do a u substitution on this. We have we have this in common, and I think it's going to work well with this. So if I do u equal to 2k plus 1, take a derivative, then our du value, this is just a constant, so we just use power rule. We're going to get 2k plus 1 times x 2k dx. Now to set this up, we have our dx, we have our x 2k. We can just kind of create this constant, multiply it in. So if I multiply in 2k plus 1 right here, I can divide by it in front, so I'm not changing the problem. And now with this, we have our full du value. So let's go ahead and substitute. So first we'll have this one over two k plus one in front. And let's update our bounds. So first when you plug infinity in for x here, this is again where it's, again, k is gonna be positive. So when we plug in infinity, this is gonna be going to infinity. And then when you plug minus infinity, and the nice thing here is two k plus one is always gonna be odd. We said it was integers. So because this is odd, we still have minus infinity here. If you had even numbers, then you'd be going from infinity to infinity. It's a totally different problem. And then now for this exponent, it's gonna simplify down to e minus u times u minus one all over two, and everything else is gonna be just du. And then at this point, just notice if you distribute this out, we're gonna have a u squared in this, and our bounds are going from minus infinity to infinity. This is starting to look a lot like the Gaussian integral, and I think we just need to do some algebra if we can clean this up. If we can just kind of clean up this exponent, I think we can make use of the Gaussian integral with some other constant values on it. So let's take this thing off to the side and see what we can do to manipulate this. So making some space. So to start, I think I'm gonna factor the two out in front. So I'm gonna write this as like minus one half and then distribute this out. And then we have this as u squared minus u. And then I can complete the square on this. What we can do is just take like, if that's a one, we can do this as u minus one half, taking half of that, square that. If you distribute that out, you get u squared minus u plus a fourth. I don't wanna change it, so let's subtract a fourth off at the end. And now let me distribute this minus one half back into everything. What I'll do is we'll keep the minus sign out front. I'll distribute one half in on the u, but remember everything's squared. So when I do this, this is gonna become u over square root of two. And then same kind of thing on the next term, we multiply it in as a one over square root of two, and this is gonna become one over two square root of two, all squared. Then I'm gonna distribute the minus one half all the way to the minus one fourth, and we get plus one eighth. So then before I rewrite the integral, let's remember this is all on the exponent of e. 
So what it's gonna look like is this is gonna be like E minus this whole thing squared. And this is setting up again the Gaussian integral because now we have this in terms of like just one thing squared. And then we're gonna have plus one eighth in the exponent, but what I can do is break that off into a separate term and write it as e to the one eighth. But for e to the one eighth, let's actually write it as e, like eighth root of e. So then when I rewrite the integral, this part right here is purely just a constant that I can bring up front. So bringing that over here, I'm gonna write this as eighth root of e over two k plus one. And then everything in the integral, is just gonna be all this stuff right here. But now let me clean up some of this junk over here because what we're noticing is now we have this really well set up. If I just make one more substitution right here, let's say I call all this stuff right here t. Well, with the derivative, there's gonna be a constant coming up, but what's gonna happen is we're gonna have e to the minus t squared for minus infinity and infinity, then we're gonna be able to use the Gaussian integral. So let's see how the substitution works. If I just set t equal to everything inside parentheses, then take a derivative on this. This part's just a constant, that's gonna be zero. Derivative here is gonna be one over square root of two du. But then solving this for du, we just get du is gonna be square root of two times dt. So then I'll go ahead and substitute this, but what I'm gonna do now, when we have our du is gonna be square root of two dt, I'm gonna bring that square root of two out front of the integral as a constant. We're gonna have this eighth root of e. It's getting messy out here, but we keep piling up things in front of the integral. And then our bounds aren't gonna change when we plug infinity in here, it's still gonna be going to infinity. When we plug minus infinity, it's still going to minus infinity. And everything's gonna just simplify down to e minus t squared dt. But now this right here, this is gonna be the full Gaussian integral. We know the value for this, this is gonna be just square root of pi. And so putting this together for my final solution, we'll have the eighth root of e in front. I'm gonna combine square root of two and square root of pi and write this as square root two pi over 2k plus one, and that's it. Okay, I was really liking that one. There's just a lot of things incorporated. We had the binomial coefficient, we got the Gaussian integral, we've got some interesting substitutions, we've got the a through to e. You kind of have everything you could possibly ever want in this one. Thanks again to Sid for the great problem. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.